third Sunday of Easter. Please stand now and join with me in singing our opening hymn, Alleluia, Love is Alive. Found the music issue, number 164, number 164 in the music issue.
Let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, you may look forward, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven raised his voice and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed, all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to my words. You who are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man commended to you by God with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs which God worked through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This man, delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed, using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Therefore, my heart has been glad, and my tongue has exalted. My flesh, too, will dwell in hope, because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David that he died and was buried, and his tomb is in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him, that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld, nor did his flesh seek corruption. God raised this Jesus. Of this we are all witnesses. Exalted at the right hand of God, he received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured him forth as you see and hear. The word of the Lord.
He gave the impression that he was going on farther, but they urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem where they found gathered together the eleven and those with whom they were, they were staying. The Lord has truly been risen and raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Were not your hearts burning within you while you spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures for us? When I was teaching at, uh, in, in St. Thomas in Minnesota, um, when I would say something brilliant to the class, I would say that are not your hearts burning within you? <laughs> Never caught on. <laughs> this is really a very powerful story about Christian life and discipleship, about moving from unbelief to faith in the risen Lord. And here we have two disciples of Jesus who believe that everything is over. They hoped that he would be the Messiah, but it all ended desperately. As Jesus was nailed to a tree, so too their expectations and their dreams were crucified with him. And now they're walking away from Jerusalem, downcast, away from God's holy city where it all happened, and their unfulfilled delusional promises that it held. And then there's this rumor that they've heard about, from some women about an empty tomb. And they thought it was crazy, and they did not believe. Everything is at a standstill in their minds, and they too are shut up in the tomb of death with Jesus, and their hearts are as heavy as the stone that closes the tomb. But what we see going on here are three things. First, they're joined by the risen Lord, who actually walks with them within their hopelessness within their disappointment. And secondly, he asks them to tell him their story, their story of disappointment and loss. And finally, he accepts their hospitality and joins them at table. And in the breaking of the bread, their eyes are open to see the risen Lord. Today's gospel assures us that when disciples recount the story of disappointment and loss, the Lord walks with them. And that's a great assurance for us. He walks with them unnoticed and unrecognized. He walks with them in their sorrow and in their bewilderment. And while hearts can be bruised and maybe even crushed, someday they will burn again. In the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, he says, I am convinced that neither death nor life Neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is made known to us in Christ Jesus. That's a great assurance for all of us. And we know that we live in a troubled world. Am I right in that? Yes. Okay. And not only in our nation, but in our, certainly throughout the world. We think about walking down, if we want to say, where is God in all of this troubled world? And so we could be making a journey to Emmaus, you know, in terms of our own faith. Think about this. We could be talking about wars in Sudan, 
We could be talking about wars in Ukraine and be disillusioned. Where is God in all of this? Gun violence in our communities? Uh, you don't know if you're going to ring the do wrong doorbell and get shot. You know, what's this all about? We think we our communities bitterly divided by politics and some by prejudice. And when I desire to feel God's presence, the risen Lord's presence, more deeply in this time of Easter celebration, where is God in this? The Easter proclamation announces that Jesus is Lord and Savior. Savior. You thought about that word? When I was a very distinguished professor at Catholic University, when I was a student sometime some years ago, uh, this guy even became a cardinal of the church. In any case, he taught eschatology, was, you know, thinking about theology about the end time. And at the time, we used to have these bumper stickers, Jesus saves. Do you remember that? And then he said, he hated those. He says, Jesus saves. What does it mean? Jesus saves green stamps? <laughs> it says too little. But if we think about Savior, a Savior is somebody who supports us or helps us out in a situation or a circumstance that we simply cannot manage on our own. We all know the experience of being burdened or being weighed down, of not knowing how to cope at times, and we recognize the need for the help of another, of a savior who's going to enter into the messiness of this situation. And the two disciples in the gospel today, they expressed their hope. We were hoping, they said, we were hoping that he could be the one to save Israel. And as they articulate that hope, it comes to fulfillment. As we hear this text, let us recognize our needs and express our hopes. Well, you might recognize you need a car, you need a washing machine, you need a new rug, that kind of thing. But what do we long for? For what do we hope? A new heart? New patience in my relationship with someone? new understanding in these frightening circumstances, a new sense of joy or happiness just in being alive. For what do I want? When I say a new heart or a new patience in this relationship, when we ask God for a new heart, it already takes hold. When you ask for God's peace, already it creeps in. And when you ask for patience, already you begin to relax and take it easier. When, when you ask for understanding in a relationship, already you are less likely to kill the other person. <laughs> when you ask for gratitude and joy, already it comes to us. Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way, how he opened up the scripture for us? From this Emmaus, we return to Jerusalem, promising that the Lord is risen and is known to us in the breaking of the bread. He, the Lord and Savior, walks with us and deciphers our story and fulfills our hopes and desires. He sets quenched hearts ablaze. Risen Savior, Lord of life, guide your Easter people.
express that faith in the Apostles' Creed, and the Apostles' Creed is found on page 114 in today's Missal. I believe in God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered in the Mount of God, was crucified and died in the Spirit, he ascended into hell.
takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our sisters and brothers who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity and a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. With trust and confidence, we now pray to our Heavenly Father as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art Thank you. 
I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Alleluia, Alleluia. Found music issue number 171. Number 171 in the music issue. Thank you. 